This man plans to sail 3,000 miles from the San Francisco Bay Area to the Hawaiian Islands. But he won't be sailing in a modern boat like this. Instead, he'll be navigating an ancient boat made completely from reeds. I think that reed boat is like one instrument, you know, that we make a symphony on this, the reed boat. I want to share how to connect with the nature, with um, the other people. In this video, you'll meet Jin Ishikawa, the 56-year-old Japanese explorer behind this ambitious expedition. You'll learn more about his mission, along with what his adventures around the world have taught him about managing fear and confronting the shortness of life. Where does this uh, appetite for adventure and exploration come from? I, I love to stay in the middle of the nature and then connect with the nature. That's the main reason why I explore. Jin has been wandering and exploring the world for nearly 40 years. Like most solo travelers, he started out with just a backpack, nomading for two years around North America, Africa, and India as a young university student. This first journey was transformative for him, seeing different people in different parts of the world live different yet meaningful lives prompted him to question his own assumptions about living a fulfilling life. I educated in Japan. We need to study a lot and go to good school and good company and get a lot of money and have a house, car have a daughter and, and sons. That's the happy life. So in that time, my common sense is broken totally. So I started thinking about that. What is the happy life for me? To answer that question, Jin decided to look beyond conventional definitions and measures of happiness. He wondered if it could be discovered outside his comfort zone. So I decided to go to Sahara Desert. I bought camel and walked for 2,000 miles away, we, I walked by myself. 2,000 miles? All the way, wow. For, for six months. When I was there, some nomad using French stone to, to make fire. Wow. You know, it's, it's like a stone age. You know. It was like very primitive. Very, very it's like primitive. Back, back, it's just back to like the origins of yeah, yeah. humanity. Yes, yes. I don't have um, not, not too much things and only uh, stripping back, you know, minimum life. Those six months in his very first expedition taught Jin a lot. But of all the lessons he learned, the most important one was about the value of solitude. Most of the time I was lonely, you know, just me. That's make me the chance to communicate with uh, nature because I feel loneliness in, in the middle of the desert. So I started talk with uh, the billo, camel, and trees. Have you ever seen that movie Castaway with Tom Hanks? Was yes. That, was that yeah. kind of like you? Yes, yes. <laughs> Wilson, like the reason is the Barry Ball. Yeah. So the, I, the, he he talked with all the time talk like a friend. And it's, it's the same situation. And then nobody, nobody there. That's why no, nobody say me that you are foolish. Changed my life totally. Sahara Desert is a very, very special place, I think. Jin's experience in the Sahara was just the beginning. More adventures and expeditions that tested his mental and physical limits followed. After Sahara, I went to Alaska. I lived with um, Inupiat people to help the catching well. After that, I went to jungle. I bought wooden canoe and paddled down the Amazon River. After that, I went to high land in Peru and Bolivia. The highlands in Peru and Bolivia wound up being where Jin first dipped his toes in an ancient mode of transportation. Reed boats are among the oldest types of sea vessels on Earth. They're used dating back to ancient civilizations in the Middle East and in South America. When I was a Titicaca Lake, I want to use the local vehicle. I and another friend tried to go around 
the Titicaca Rake with a Thule board. That's the first journey with a reed boat. During that same time, Jin had heard about a Spanish explorer named Kitten Munoz, who was planning to cross the Pacific Ocean on a ship made completely from reeds. When I heard that project, I wanted to participate that. And I told him, please, I, I want to join you. And he said, oh yes, yes please, because I'm looking for the Japanese crew because we head into Japan. So that's why. And we shake hand, deal. I participate the reed boat journey. Jin wound up joining the crews of the Matarangi 2 and the Matarangi 3, Munoz's second and third attempts to cross oceans in a Thule built ship. The both the reed boat is broken in the middle of ocean. Oh, it broke in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> ocean yeah. Like the, in the, the middle of the journey? Yeah, middle of the journey. Yeah. Las cuerdas se rompen por todos lados. El casco se debilita bajo el peso de los mástiles que se clavan queriendo penetrar en él. And we dr started drift and alive one island. Uh -huh. I'm Pornesen Island. We, we survived, but it's very, very, it's very strange. Uh, navigation. Uh, this is it right here. Yeah, this is a reed boat. It's named Amana. Those early reed boat experiences laid the foundation for what Jin is trying to accomplish now. In 2025, he's planning to travel by reed boat again this time from California to Hawaii, on an adventure he's named Expedition Amana. Where'd you come up with the name? Uh, it's the old, old Japanese word. And ama, it's meant sea. Uh -huh. And na, it's seven. So seven ocean. Seven, seven ocean. sea, seven seas. Oh, the seven That's seas. Meant, it's meant the ocean. He estimates that the journey will take around 45 days since his ship will only travel at a speed of 2.5 knots. For reference, that is the walking speed of an average person. The journey is very beautiful. You know, it's, it's like um, we ride on the time machine and go to the ancient time. And we want to share the how, is, how to connect, how to live with the nature, mm -hmm. you know, like, like an ancient people. The longer boat is going to be 60 feet. Correct. 60 feet, yep, around. Okay. Jin's boat is based on a design from the Pomo, a tribe of indigenous people who've historically lived in the Clear Lake area of Northern California close to 12,000 years. From here, about 200 miles away, and there is many indigenous people living around the lake. So they're still now making the Thule boat. This boat that Jin showed me is only a prototype of the one he plans to use in 2025. His boat is made from tule grass from Clear Lake along with dry wood from Ukiah. Is this area right here that you're leaning against, that's like the steering? Steer, yeah, it's a uh, rudder. The rudder, rudder okay. Yeah, rudder. It's a double rudder. It has a um, rudder board underneath. Hold it, it's very small. Oh, this. Isn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> Based on his previous experiences, Jin is aware of the risks of his expedition, which is why he has contingencies in place in case something goes wrong. He told me that there will be a support boat trailing the Amana about three to four miles behind. That distance, he calculated, is close enough to call for help if there's an emergency, but far enough to minimize modern distractions and conveniences. One. For emergency. Oh yeah, like a flare? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yep. I see that you have paddles here too. <laughs> yep. Are you going to have paddles on the bigger boat? No, no, no. We, we couldn't paddle because 60 feet is it's very big. It's, yeah. It's, we couldn't control with paddle. Mm -hmm. The boat was built at Galilee Harbor, a member-run cooperative comprised of a community of artists as well as maritime workers in Sausalito. Where did you get these? Like the anchor, was that donated or did you, yeah, did you purchase just, that? Yeah, uh, this community okay. help us a lot. You know, yeah. The one guy, Ted, uh, they borrow us, they're using this. Right. 
Yeah. Gotcha. Many, many volunteers and many helps. What's your relationship to fear? Fear is very, very important. It's the fear is the one of the sign, you know. And, and you know the positive thinking. It's, it's, it's not good, not so good for the, the adventure or explore. We need to talk with the fear. Why I feel the fear? The the fear always teach me, they tell me what I need to do. I think that adventurers like Jin, who push their physical and mental limits of what's possible, help us to see what our fears for what they truly are. Imaginary specters of a future that hasn't been written yet. In the presence of fear, there are really only two ways we can respond. We can either let it sink us, or we can choose to be brave and just swim. How did you learn to have a good relationship with death? <laughs> I know, I so don't, many people don't. like they're all like people don't even like to talk about dying because they're just yeah, so scared I know, I know. of it. Because they they afraid that they they don't know what is that. But I I know what is a death because I, I have experience to feel that. People they feel the death is like this big. But really the size is like this. Death is it's like a sign to where I need to go. Swimming with what scares us isn't fun. It isn't comfortable and it isn't easy. But having the courage to swim, that can often be the difference between having our lives count for something or living a life full of regrets. That's why I, it's the death and fear is, is good friend for me, very kind. <laughs>